Thanks, Juliana. And thanks everyone for attending our session about applying AI to critical challenges in financial services. Today, we're gonna see two demos um, of you know, how, uh, how Red Hat can help, help customers uh, build um, AI powered solutions. Um, I'm, my name is Maris Bogovici. I'm a chief solutions architect for financial services at Red Hat. I work with um, you know the kind of the top 30 financial institutions in the US and Canada, in particular in the field of digital transformation, and to help them build um, AI-based solutions. I'm joined today by my colleague Sadhana Nanda Kumar. I'll let her a second to introduce herself. Yeah, thanks, Marius. Um, hi, this is Sadhana Kumar, and I'm a senior solutions architect um, at Red Hat, and I work alongside Marius, um, specializing in the application development portfolio. Where I help create solutions um, for our banking customers. I'm glad to be here today. Over to you, Marius. Thanks, Sadhana. So again, once again, thanks everyone. We're gonna spend a very little time kind of setting the problem and then kind of dive into the two demos that we have <clears throat> that we'd like to show you i just wanted kind of to recap real quick of the context of this conversation and you've probably heard that you know ai is redefining success for financial institutions what does that mean it means that banks generally have relied on economies of scale and have uh, relied on physical footprint and have relied on um you know, the relationship exclusivity with customers, you know, to kind of keep, uh, you know, ensure that they have a customer base. The larger you were, um, the, the more likely you were to retain customers and to succeed. Uh, but, you know, emerging technologies and in particular AI have changed that dynamic. Instead of, you know, the scale of assets, it's more about the efficiency than which you use your data. Uh, instead of you know being able to provide services at scale, it's how well do you serve your customers and how well you you understand what they need. And in fact, um, one of the demos that you will see today is exactly coming in, into the space. So, you know, understanding this uh, and applying a artificial intelligence cleverly is creating differentiators, either for, by helping financial institutions work more efficiently, or by helping them capture and define new ways of, of doing business. So, you know, things and interactions are, are either, uh, you know, the, the kind of the operational aspects are commoditized and made more efficient, but uh, new models of business and new understanding of the customer creates new opportunities for, for banks. And this is the main question. How do they, how they are, how are they efficient? How are they, how are they, uh, how enterprises can be, uh, can do better? And the starting point for that, and kind of the key to our demo today, is that yes, um, building models and uh, having the right algorithms for the business is definitely a success criterion, is extremely important. But you can, as you can see in this diagram, that's a, as, uh, that's adapted from a famous paper um, and published, um, you know, called Hidden Technical Depth in Machine Learning Systems, the model is just a small part of the whole system. And in fact, intelligent solutions require uh, the proper, you know, the proper communication, collecting the right amount of data, uh, verifying it, but also the ability to build and deploy models uh, rapidly at scale and make them work well with the rest of the application. And that is essentially the product of interdisciplinary work of the collaboration of multiple teams. Data engineers that get the data, transform it and prepare it. Data scientists that analyze it. Um, application developers that take the models that data scientists have developed and um, incorporate them into business solutions, which is ultimately the goal of the exercise. And um, last but not least, infrastructure in infrastructure engineers required to um, uh, need to, to operate these models at scale. So in order for that to happen, it, we need to build, like we, we need to have a way to um, essentially apply the workflow at the top, like from the setting goals to getting preparing data, developing the machine learning model and doing all these other activities in a consistent manner that brings everyone at the uh, on the same page. This is you know, where um, uh, you know, Red Hat's portfolio uh, can help building 
um, not only kind of the solutions, but actually creating a platform um, um, at the, a platform that uh, allows these different teams to collaborate and kind of and covers every aspect of of the process. Easy access to infrastructure, um, the building of the models using containerized solutions, and also the execution of machine learning software tools. The um, the the way the reflection of this concept is the Open Data Hub architecture. That is a reference open source architecture put together by Red Hat. It is a community project that actually illustrates how a combination of open source software um, you know, running on top of a container orchestration platform like OpenShift can help build uh, uh, complex um, AI solutions and can help the different um, personas that are part of the of this life cycle interact with each other. So what you're going to see today in the first demo is essentially how this platform comes together to solve a problem from you know from from um, um, defining and doing the data analysis up to building uh, models in production. We're going to see you know we're going to see a data scientist essentially doing their work in Jupyter note uh, in Jupyter notebooks for creating the algorithms um, that train the models. We're going to see a CI/CD process using OpenShift pipelines that takes the result of that work from Git and deploys it as uh, as a running service using OpenShift serverless. And finally, we're going to see how that model uh, that model can be uh, can be monitored. The, the problem domain that we're kind of tackling is fraud prevention. So let's go to the let's go to the demo and take a quick look at how that process entails. We have uh, we have the OpenShift uh, operator, oh, the Open Data Hub operator already installed on OpenShift, and I'm going to be working in the user space user called um, user two. When user two logs in, it can um, it will be uh, it will have access to a number of, of components. In this case, I'm going to open the <clears throat> Open Data Hub uh, dashboard and launch Jupyter Hub. Jupyter Hub will allow me to create Jupyter uh, running Jupyter notebooks that um, that will. Um, in fact, be the environment in which uh, the data scientists will do their data exploration and work. This is very important. By using resources, by using a, uh, by using um, uh, containers, and by using a container orchestration platform, I can create a more efficient platform here. Instead of wondering about how do I brew the proper libraries on my laptop and how do I uh, get access to resource like GP, resources like GPUs, I can defer all that work. To, to OpenShift, and you know, I can use, for example, a container image that has uh, all the libraries already loaded in. So now that I launched, uh, now that I launched, now that, now that I launched Jupyter Hub, I can start the different activities as a data scientist. And the data scientist would actually, in, in this case, for example, we're using a GitHub um, a repository that already has the notebooks in. But you can imagine a data scientist coming in and building these different uh, uh, these different notebooks and codifying their findings to share with the rest of the team. So you know, I can start and you know, the, do the exploratory data analysis to understand how the data is shaped, um, how you know how the structure of the different transactions, legitimate and fraudulent. I can understand their distribution and can I can start thinking of what features or characteristics these different transactions can have. Once I do so, you know, once I once I start exploring this data and start kind of uh, cleaning and ca and categorizing the different features, um, I end up with essentially with a combination of notes and Python code that implement the algorithms, for example, for for extracting features and and processing the data. And finally, um, I can once the features have been identified, I can use them to start training model. In this example, for example, we have two, two models, logistic regression and uh, a random forest algorithm to run um, the, um, uh, to, to um, execute and, and, and to train a specific model. 
Now, the key piece is that so far, everything that exists here exists in the Git repository. It is uh, algorithms and data and information that someone will actually have to put together in order to build and run uh, this as a service. So the next step is once all, everything is defined to take these notebooks and to execute them uh, and to create actually uh, running services. So in this case, what I have here is an OpenShift um, pipelines pipeline that takes these notebooks from their GitHub repository and creates and turns them into a container image uh, that can be deployed as a service to serve and, and uh, run the, the model inference. Let's start the pipeline run. It will run for a while, so um, I will just kind of get it started. I just want to kind of show you a few of the options here. For example, I have a builder image that does the, the encoding. I have a list of notebooks which are which contain the code that, that our data scientist has developed. Uh, I have a two other parameters like a base model image that has libraries and, and everything that uh, the model image is actually the target uh, where the kind of the containerized image of the service will be built um, and the source of this uh, of this build process. So when I start this process, you can see that you know it will run for a while. Um, it will run for about 10 minutes, so we don't have time today. I will just show you the final result um, of this pipeline, which is which looks something as looks as something like this. You know, when it finalized, it actually built the model. It has, you know, by looking at the logs, I can understand. Um, uh, you know, it it um, I, I can see that it um, has applied the code um, that was in the notebooks to actually train this model with, with, um, with data that was provided to the build. It has turned it into a container image. And in this case, it, this container image has been deployed as a serverless service in my, in my application. So um, this makes it easy, for example, for, for developers to use the result of the work of data scientists. They just need to know where the code is and, uh, um, you know, and and how it's um, um, and to have the extraction that takes it that runs the service, but also it makes it easy for data scientists, for example, to hand over the, their work to developers by knowing that there's a process that turns everything that they did, makes it a container image, and and runs it on the um, uh, runs it as a service. And indeed, I can see that the result of this is a uh, is an OpenShift serverless service that runs here in can run inference. I'm gonna do a quick, one more quick thing to show you uh, how this works. In this notebook, I have a way to interact with this service that you see here, this is its URL, and to make calls that, um, you know, that evaluate various transactions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm just gonna run this real quick. And you can see, as, as we go through the through the different notebooks, the results of the evaluation, as well as a few other tests. These tests are important because they cover the last part of what we want to show, which is monitoring. Everything that the service does is essentially published as metrics to Prometheus. So I can use Prometheus here to evaluate the different the different prediction results and to see, for example, to monitor the distributions uh, between legitimate and fraudulent transactions. Um, if you are following this space, you know that, generally speaking, um, fraudulent and legitimate transactions have a, a typical distribution, right? I'm expecting to have far more um, 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 legitimate than fraudulent transactions. So when the ratio starts to shift, it might be a case where the model has drifted. Uh, is not applicable anymore. So by monitoring the data in Prometheus, um, I can actually um, see whether these transactions are, um, uh, whether my model is still applicable, or maybe I can start, uh, uh, I'm required to retrain it um, or reevaluate it. So this concludes our first demo. Um, as a, you know, to, to recap, what you've seen is, um, 
you know, how a data scientist can use Jupyter Labs running an OpenShift to actually create data science environments uh, that can allocate different expensive resources like memory, CPU, and data, um, and also kind of work in a centralized environment, how they can share the results of their work with, with, uh, with other development teams, how they can turn this into a running model by using, um, um, you know, a, a CICD tool, um, and how a deployed service can be monitored using Prometheus. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to hand it over to Sadhana uh, for the second part um, of this, um, uh, for the second part of this, um, uh, of this demo. Thanks, Marius. While uh, we are switching screens, um, I just wanted to set some context. Um, essentially, what we're going to be doing today is um, we're going to be talking about another use case um, where um, you know AI plays a key role. Um, personalization is a topic of discussion across every industry today. And with the post-pandemic era that we are in, it is more relevant than ever for businesses to um, make sure that the distance does not discount on the services that the customer deserves. And um, while the first uh, use case spoke about fraud, the second one talks about how you can improve the overall customer satisfaction by providing better digital experience to the customers. And um, so let's keep going here. Um, so with the various researches um, that are happening across the globe, one thing is evident that when you actually pro provide the right level of service to the customers at the right time, that provides a differentiator for your brand. That makes sure that the customer loyalty goes up significantly. And essentially what we are trying to do here is bringing in the effectiveness that is being provided by AI uh, and combining that with the business users best judgment to create what is called as AI powered business decisioning. And the reason why I say it's AI powered is it's you're getting the intelligence from the historical data and the predictive data, but you still provide the steering wheel to your business users so that they can react to change when they need to do it. So um, as much as the AI is providing them with the right um, you know, path forward, they also have their discretion to determine an alternate flow in case of need. And so the use case that we will be looking at today is um, providing best offers to retail banking customers based on their past historical purchases, the likelihood of a customer accepting an offer, offer of a particular type, and the business user's discretion. Again, uh, when you're thinking about a solution of this nature, something that's critical is the ability to do you know, traceability into the whole process that happens. And so um, a very high level logical view all of the customers interaction via the various events, they're gonna come in through different channels into an event stream. This event is then gonna be analyzed by that AI powered decisioning component that I spoke about, uh, which then determines the best offers um, to be extended to the customer. And typically when you look at a use case of this nature, multiple teams are involved. You're gonna have the data engineering and the data science teams looking at the overall production data and coming out with patterns and predictions. Whereas the intelligent business application is going to provide for the uh, service to the customer in real time. So as soon as an event occurs, it's going to look at the behavior patterns of the customer and it's going to respond back to the customer in real time, providing that offer right when they actually need it and when they are best suited to accept it. And so um, high level view of the architecture here. Um, so you're gonna have um, the event stream that's gonna form the backbone of this architecture. And as these events come in, um, as I mentioned, it's gonna be pulled in by an, a business automation component and behind which, uh, you know, there is a sophistication with respect to data. So every customer is gonna have that customer 360 degree profile. That's gonna be a combination of data that's spread across the organization. So the ability to pull in that information along with the predictive profile and provide it in an abstracted way is gonna be critical in identifying the right patterns of behavior and the right offer to the customer. So with that overview, let's look at this in action. And I just wanted to call out that all of the pieces related to the data science aspect that Marius walked through in the first demo is applicable here as well. So it's the same data science experience, same way that they create the notebooks, the same flexibility they get with deployment. 
So in this use case, you have this banking customer, Sara, who is a platinum card customer, and she has a spending summary that says she's predominantly made airline purchases. So with that profile, let's go in into an airline booking web page and let's quickly make a purchase. So as soon as the purchase is being performed here, you can see that an airline transaction event is put in into the event stream. This event is then being acted upon by our decisioning component and it generates an offer on the fly in real time. So when you go back and refresh the offer section, you can see that they've received an offer to upgrade to an airline card. Now, how did this happen? So to better understand that, um, I have a decision model that I've represented here um, in a standard notation and a graphical notation, which is easier for business users to understand and extend. So essentially, we are combining several different factors relevant to the customer's profile, pulling in a customer segmentation model, which is a machine learning model. So you're essentially combining profile information, historical information, predictive information, all of which then goes on to determine the offer. So in this case, you had an airline purchase with a customer who is a platinum card customer and the qualified purchaser said he's predominantly made airline purchases in the past and hence that offer was extended to the customer. Now, in order to better understand this, we spoke about the aspect of traceability and which is why I think it's important to talk about how you can use the event source to do analytics. This again feeds back into the data science loop to make sure that the models are constantly being made better and better. So let's filter by this particular user who is uh, the user 898920. And you can clearly understand um, that this person was given this offer because of his status and his predictive profile and his historical profile. So essentially you're able to get that traceability into the decisions that are being made, uh, providing for you know, better control over data privacy regulation uh, making it much more seamless when you, you know, think about releasing offers or doing marketing based on customer data. And I think all of this kind of sums up uh, the overall architecture in here. Um, you can see that um, uh, several of our products from our portfolio have joined together to create a solution of this nature. And um, the open data science aspect of the concepts that uh, you know, Maria spoke about in the beginning of this conversation is going to add that data science glue uh, to the rest of the application development stack by making sure that the intelligence can be put to use when it needs the most. So with that, um, I'm just going to transfer it back to Marius uh, for some final thoughts.